WWE, UFC, what do you guys think? I, I mean, the general idea and consensus going around right now is somehow the, these two are going to merge. And the merging just means that we're going to share talent. And the share talent just means we're going to take UFC fighters and they're going to go up here on WWE. That's it. If the UFC holds a show, they might take some top wrestlers and put them in the front row to go to cameos, but that's been going on for 20 years anyway, right? I mean, it's just one of these spots where I'm not totally sure why there's a belief and a narrative that we're going to go and all of a sudden talent is going to be walking back and forth. I'm just not certain of that. When, 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 when the Hollywood element came over to the UFC, we start seeing movies advertised on the ring apron and we start seeing stars in the audience that we throw into a cameo and then we mention the new movie they've got coming out but that had been going on for 20 years anyway right if mark Wahlberg wanted to come to a ufc they'd give him beautiful tickets and they stuck him on camera anyway i'm just sharing for you i don't know how much we should really believe that there's going to be this massive back and forth and that vince and dan are going to have to figure out how to work together i think you're going to see a little bit of that but you've seen a little bit of that anyway I remember the first time I saw Stone Cold at a fight. It was Pat Berry versus Prokop. Rich Franklin versus Chuck Liddell was the main event that night. We're over in Vancouver, Canada. That's just off memory. I can't remember the time that we've done a Texas show and Undertaker didn't show up. That's just off memory. Mick Foley would be a fine example. We even saw John Cena a couple weeks ago. By the way, my feud with John Cena is over. Maybe I should tell you guys that. My back and forth with John Cena is, I'm bearing it. And you want to know why? I think, and I'm a mark, I know that I'm a mark, but I, I have to remain a mark, guys. I have to remain a mark or I can't enjoy pro wrestling. you got to be a mark to some degree. I believe that John Cena just had his retirement match. Now, whether that's actually the last and he never steps in there again, I'm not quite going that far, but John Cena to jerk the curtain at WrestleMania and then to go down clean one, two, three in his own move which means he's basically passing the move. He's not only passing all the esteem, he's also passing the technique over to that guy. It was the right thing to do. None of them ever do it. They all know the right thing to do is that you pass the torch before you go. They all know that, but when it gets time to actually do it, they don't want to do the J-O-B. They're on Brett's side more than they're on Sean's. That's just the reality. So for Cena to jerk the curtain, to lose clean, to lose in his own move, and to lose that gentleman, I just thought it was an awesome thing to do. That is the right thing to do. I also think that's how he is going to exit stage left, which not for nothing is also the correct way that you should do it. There shouldn't be a whole big show and a, and a song and dance and this is you're going to be your last match and this is your retirement match and you come out and you lie to the audience and do that whole thing. Shouldn't be doing any of that. Understand why you do, but I think that John Cena went out the right way. And I just bring this to you because, right, this is all kind of at the same time. Look, I'll give you an example. I know that WWE is interested in Dylan Dennis. I know that because I got contacted to say if I was interested in being a Paul Heyman for Dylan Dennis. So I, I'm just sharing with you that something like this is out there. So I, of course, I got to get a hold of Dylan right away. Hey, what's this about and what do you know? And Dylan is in a very unique spot. Puts me in a unique spot. I know a lot of things about Dylan. I talk to Dylan quite often. I know a lot of things that haven't been made public for you, but I don't like to discuss it, right? It's one of those, it's one of those deals. Did he tell me so that I discuss it or did he tell me because he knew I wanted? It's one of those deals. When Dylan did not fight KSI, the audience felt as though the bargain that they had with Dylan, the performer, was broken. The audience felt as though we can't count on you, we can't trust you, I can't look forward to something, I can't build hype towards something, I can't read about and study and even weigh in with some comments on something if it isn't going to actually go through. Now, Dylan had very Good reason for not going through. I got to leave it at that. I got to dance around. My own personal opinion, I think Dylan misunderstood something. Something happened that was open for interpretation. And one interpretation, Dylan's got to go. But another interpretation, everything's fine. We just had a little bit of a misunderstanding here. I got And I got to play the game with you guys like this. But I only say that because Dylan has chosen to not come out and tell people what happened there. I think maybe it's a mistake. I think maybe you, the audience, has not forgiven him, does not know that he's serious, forgets what a competitor is, forgets that he, he's undefeated in Bellator. 
forgets that he went 20 straight minutes with Gordon Ryan with a score of 0-0. I mean, I think maybe they have forgotten some of that and think that he just got bitten by the bug of being in the show. And I don't know that the audience is wrong. There just seems to be a misunderstanding. As I said to you a moment ago, sometimes things are open for interpretation. And I think the first thing that Dylan's going to need to do if he, in fact, does want to get back in to competitive, because it's not just with the fans, right? You have this deal and this bargain with the fans where they have to know that you're sincere that you want to do it. But moreover, then you also have to go to the promoter. The promoter listens to the fans. That's why I keep saying that the athletes got to get to the fans. The promoter will listen to them. A promoter isn't going to go and book a match, particularly a feature match, that he's promising the crowd, co-main event or main event spot. It's going to have artwork and it's going to have programming. There's going to be a lot of money and media marketing going along with that, even PR, and use that in a direction that isn't going to come to fruition. So it's, it's one of these interesting things where Dylan is putting this very interesting spot, but he still saw it after, and I know that people still want him. I get contacted by media members all the time that just want me to make an introduction so they want to have him on. And for right now, Dylan's tell, telling people no, but I, I, I do wonder at times if he's making the wrong move. I'm not 100% convinced that Dylan knows that you, the audience, feels a bargain between the two of you was broken and that it needs repair. But it it is one of these things, right? It is one of these very interesting things when you do think about the UFC and MMA and as it pertains together. And maybe I just got a personal experience because in 1998, I was a NCAA All-American, but I also that summer went out to Atlanta. I had called a 800 number, possibly a 900 number. They came across the bottom of a screen in my living room when I was watching something called Monday Nitro. Do you want to be a pro wrestler? Call this number. And I did. And they said, all right, great. Come out to Atlanta. Come out to Atlanta. We're going to have a three-day trial. That's going to be free. If we accept you, if you pass the test and you get invited to come and train, it's going to cost you $3,000. So I see the commerce here, right? This is a wrestling school. This is a business. I understand. That's why they're advertising it on TV. Great marketing. Come to me. Make me come back. Make, make, make me try something and, and, and make me feel like you know, I did good by getting in. I get. I mean, that's, that's basically the model of every college in America. When they pretend to be recruiting you, to make you come and beg for them to allow you to write them a check. Fair enough, but I go and do it. I get on the plane and I actually go and do it. There was 18 of us. And the rule was quite simple. It's much like Navy SEAL training. When you've had enough, quit. When you quit, don't come back. But that was it. Get your stuff. Don't say goodbye to me. You don't have anything to sign. Don't tell me, hey, thank you. I'm Don't say anything. Get up, get your stuff, and go. And don't come back. And by the second day, there was only three of us. Of the 18, we were down to three. Me, a police officer from Georgia, and a gentleman from Jamaica. On day three, it was still the three of us, but the cop didn't show. And day three was only a half day. But the officer didn't show. So now it's just me and the Jamaican. He finished and I finished and we both got the invite. I tell you that story because it was so hard. It was, it was shocking how difficult this was. I was an NCAA All-American. I mean, I bring that to you because I'm in the pinnacle of shape. I'm amongst the most fit that I've ever been on my time on this earth. And barely could get through this. What we had to do squats, push-ups, and sit-ups. And then you get up and you do them again. You start with your squats, you go to your push-ups, you do your sit-ups. When you do your squats, they put a bucket behind you. Five-gallon bucket, put it behind you, turn it upside down. Like, so you could sit on it. Like, what, are, are you picturing that right? When you do your squats, you got to come up on your toes, you got to throw both hands up, and you know you're low enough when your butt hits that bucket. 50 of those into the push-ups, into the sit-ups, back on your feet. 50 of those, but we did hours and hours. It was a very difficult thing. And I remember that bucket, guys. I remember that bucket because I sat down and squatted in that thing so many times. You don't know where it is, right? I mean, you're, you're just going to, you don't really know what it's stuff that my, I had, I was cut. It was cut into me, the indent from the lip of the bucket. It was just such a difficult thing. And eventually your body just gives out. You can't do any more push-ups. You can't do any more sit-ups. You can't do any more squats. And that's where psh, 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 these guys were exiting stage left. It was a really tough situation. And it does create a little bit of a frustration for me when I see these UFC guys thinking they can just go walk right over 
and do something within the WWE. It, it greatly diminishes the athleticism. It greatly diminishes the training. And it really shows a lack of understanding amongst one group of athletes to another.